Hi everybody, welcome to my kitchen. Um, if you hear the dryer in the background, it's because I took a bit of a slide down a hill in the muck this morning and I had to wash my clothes when I got home from work. So this is real life folks. And yeah, so my dryer's going, but hopefully you can follow along and the noise is not too bad. Tonight I'm going to make some uh, vegetable leather. Instead of fruit leather, I'm gonna make vegetable leather with some kale and some carrots and some applesauce. So yeah, there's fruit, but I need the pectin. Hopefully you can see my face. Um, so I've got some carrots and some kale and some applesauce and I'm gonna put some gelatin in there as well. So I'll just set this here and hopefully you can see. I'm just gonna chop up the carrots and I'm gonna uh, soften them up in, in, the, in some water. So I'm gonna boil them. I'm just gonna ch rough chop. They don't need to be perfect or all uniform. Um, so I'm making these uh, vegetable leathers to take on a backpacking uh, trip that I'm doing this weekend. I'm going on Thursday night and Friday night uh, solo and um, I generally uh, don't eat a lot of uh, pre-manufactured foods because I have celiac disease as well as a lot of other uh, food uh, intolerances so as well as grains like wheat, barley, and rye are the uh, gluten ones, uh, so people with celiac disease can't eat those. Um, I can also only eat certified gluten-free oats, and um, I haven't really tried rice in a long, long time, but last time I tried it, it just didn't make me feel very good. Um, and then I also can't eat peanuts or soy or... Um, anything like uh, kidney beans or chickpeas I've tried and they just give me uh, some weird reactions so I stay away from legumes as well as uh, peanuts other nuts I'm okay with but a lot of the manufactured um, vegetable leathers uh, it's mostly fruit there's hardly any vegetable in them. and I prefer to have a little bit more uh, nutrient dense foods so more vegetables rather than fruits so I'm going to try this. I'm just making it up as I go along and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this recipe as well. I'll be back after the carrots come to a boil. Hi, welcome back. Um, my carrots are softened up now, so I'm just going to move them into the food processor. So during the... Uh, hiatus of a few minutes. I tore up the kale. So I'm just going to soften that up in this hot water um, just a little bit because um, I think it'll probably blend better if it's um, if it's softened rather than if it's still um, uh, fresh. So I um, just ripped up all of that uh, kale that was on that thing. And so I'm going to do the whole thing. I don't know how much fruit le or um, vegetable leather this is going to do. It's fruit and vegetable because it's got apples in it as well. Um, and did you know that carrots have pectin in them as well? I didn't know that until I was looking up recipes for, for uh, fruit leathers. So... Apparently carrots have pectin as well. So I'm gonna do, probably, I've got these two large carrots and I'm gonna do, uh, just soften up this kale. And then I'm gonna do, I'm not sure one or maybe uh, both of these applesauce. I guess it'll depend on the texture. I've also got some uh, gelatin um, gelling here. I use the Great Lakes gelatin. If you are vegetarian or vegan though, you can use more pectin, so more applesauce, or uh, you can get pectin powder, um, or you can also use agar. I'm just going to stir this around so all of the kale softens a little bit. Oh goodness, I'm a little bit stiff from taking that tumble down 
the hill. Well, it wasn't really a tumble. I literally slipped and slid down on my bum like I uh, was on a toboggan, literally. Um, so I had, I was walking around the office all day today with mud all down my back, on my the bum of my pants. That's the second time that's happened to me. Um, I think just since lockdown. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that trail gets really, really mucky after a couple days of rain. So this, this recipe, it's not even really a recipe yet. Um, I have not tried this. I've never even made fruit leathers before. Um, I usually try to have some uh, dehydrated vegetables with me when I go um, when I go out backpacking or when even when I'm just camping um, I like to have vegetables pretty much with every meal fruit or vegetables with every meal you should have lots and lots of greens in your in your diet regularly um, especially now with um, COVID going around and it, we're getting into cold and flu season as well so if you want to keep your immune system working at the optimum function then lots and lots of greens, so kale, spinach, um, have salads for, for lunch, have uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, and even lots of other colorful vegetables like carrots, beets, turnip, rutabaga, anything you can eat, um, it's gonna be good for you. Um, rather than, you know, the, the usual potatoes, white potatoes, really not a whole lot of uh, immune, uh, strengthening vitamins in potatoes or rice or anything like that so stock up on the vegetables and then you don't need to fill up on the potatoes and the rice and stuff so let me give this kale another little stir totally missed the pot there did you see that it's probably the food processors in the way probably do this in a pan. The pot's not very big. And I do apologize for the dryer noises, but I don't have a lot of uh, time that I can do cooking and laundry and, you know, everything else that is required of adulting these days. Adulting. Why does it have to go on for so long? My goodness. I feel like I've been at it forever and ever and ever. My aunt, I have an aunt who lived to be 101. I'm 53 now, so I'm just slightly old, slightly more than middle age according to Aunt Jean's uh, profile. She was my uh, maternal grandmother's sister. My maternal grandmother unfortunately only lived to 76, but Jean, 101 years old. She said her secret, wild turkey bourbon and orange juice every morning for breakfast yeah crazy eh george burns made it to 101 as well and he had martinis and cigars every day so you know you just never know right my own mother only made it to 71 so hopefully Somewhere between my mother's age and Aunt Jean's age is where I'll get to. Okay, so the kale I think is uh, soft enough now. I'm just going to put it in here with the carrots. I really kind of only gave like a cursory glance to um, some fruit leather recipes. I couldn't, I was searching for vegetable leather recipes and I couldn't find any. Um, so I decided I'm just going to make up my own, which is, I do that quite a lot. I have a lot of my own recipes, um, since I was diagnosed with celiac disease, I kind of just modified my favorite recipes from when I was growing up and modified them to be, uh, more healthy for me. So no gluten, less sugar, and none of the things that, uh, don't agree with my system. Okay, so now I've got the carrots 
and the kale in there. I'm just going to, excuse my reach, I'm going to scoop the gelatin in here. It's kind of goopy. It might need. Some more hot water. I'm gonna get some hot water. I guess I left it in there too long. There. Oops. It's been one of those kind of days, I tell you. At first, like this morning when I was getting my lunch ready to go to work, I dropped my apple on the floor, so it bounced around and got covered in bruises. And then I got covered in bruises by bouncing down the hill. And then I got to work. I got, I don't know how many paper cuts today. It was just, just crazy. And now I've just scalded myself with the hot water. Okay, so I'm going to try this with just one uh, applesauce for now. And then I'll see what the consistency is like. It might also need some more water. Not sure. Like I said, I have never, I've never made um, even fruit leathers before but I kind of know what they're supposed to look like. So I'll just go with that. Okay, so I'm gonna make some big noise. Maybe, there we go, okay. It's actually not as noisy as I would think. My blender, oh, it's noisy. Scrape this down a little bit to see some chunks. Yeah, I might need some more applesauce. Spin this around a few more times to see. The one tablespoon of gelatin will work because there's enough there should be enough pectin in the applesauce and the carrots to to make this gel if it doesn't oh well then i guess i will just have some kale and carrot soup so let me just get some of these things out of the way and go and get my uh, dehydrator tray over slightly. I'll be back. Okay, so I don't know if this is all going to fit on this tray, but hopefully. yummy, doesn't it? Okay, so let me just tilt this down a little bit. Can you see that like that? Kinda. Just trying to arrange the camera here. Very difficult because the refrigerator is directly behind the, the camera. I'm in a, a condominium apartment, so my kitchen is um, not the biggest in the world. Um, it's not the smallest, but it's not the biggest for sure. 
Um, now I don't have the uh, fruit leather sheet for my dehydrator, so I'm just using some parchment paper and I'm gonna, this is still a little bit chunky, but I think that's okay, honestly. Um, so I'm just gonna spread this out so that it's um, pretty much even. Now from what I read, uh, it says you should do the sides. Um, thicker, I think, than the middle. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll just try and do this as smooth as possible. And I'm probably going to need to put another tray. But... I forget how much, what the temperature is that I should put this at. I think it was 135. Um, you know what? I, I don't understand why in Canada we, we use the metric system. So, um, you know, like for, for traveling, it's kilometers or time because we don't know how far a kilometer is. Um, for, you know, measuring how tall we are, mostly we use uh, centimeters. So I'm 162, 163 centimeters um, on my driver's license anyway. Um, so yeah, and, and our temperature we uh, measure in um, Celsius. But for cooking, all of our recipes, maybe because most of our cookbooks come from the, the US, and our oven, it uh, measures in Fahrenheit. And my oven doesn't even have a, a button that I can switch it to uh, Celsius. So I have no idea why we do that when we're cooking. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully this will turn into a vegetable leather. So I'm just gonna stick it in my come over to my dining room where I have to use my uh, dehydrator here. I'm just going to stick this in the dehydrator and I'm going to try it for about six to eight hours. I'm going to try, I guess, at 135. Oh, so 130 is 54 Celsius. So I'm going to try at about 135. So here we are back at the kale and carrot vegetable leather. It's only been in here for four hours. It's just um, a little after uh, 10 o'clock, I think. I put it in just after six o'clock, but I think it's done. So I think I can probably take it out. Like it's getting crunchy around the edge, but um, hmm. It tastes all right. So, I think I'll take this out and then I will just package this up so that it'll be ready for my trip. It looks pretty good. It tastes all right. I think this is a pretty good, pretty good hit. I'll let you know for sure though, after I've been eating it for a couple of days while I'm out on the trail. Have a good night. Okay, here we are the following morning and I'm just going to uh, package up this um, kale and carrot leather. I had to let it cool overnight and I was very, very tired so I just went to bed. It's coming up fairly easily. It's not exactly like a you know like that fruit roll up um, stuff but I think it's going to be okay and uh, it's not sticky at all and it's not going to be hot out so I don't think I um, will need to uh, wrap it like in the in the parchment to keep it from sticking to each itself so I'm just going to tear it into small you know bite-sized pieces <laughs> bite-sized um, and just keep it in this uh, silicone package. So the edge is kind of crunchy, like a, more like a kale chip than uh, a, a fruit leather or a vegetable leather. So this recipe needs to be 
uh, finessed, I think. Uh, but it tastes good and um, it's still nutritious. It's got lots of vitamins and fiber and um, the gelatin is also good. So uh, if anybody has any suggestions on how I could improve this, I think maybe maybe another, um, some more applesauce maybe, and then follow the suggestion that I read and actually make the outside, um, the edges, thicker than the inside, because the inside is um, more like uh, leather than the outside, which is more like, so where it was thin, it's more like a, um, a chip or a cracker, which is good. I like chips and crackers. This will be um, amazing snacks um, to go with, uh, you know, trail food. So I can just keep it in my pocket or have it for dinner. I think this will be great. But yeah, if anybody has any suggestions on um, how I can make this more like leather, I think maybe some more applesauce will do. Um, but if anybody has made uh, fruit leathers or has made some vegetable leathers, do let me know. Comment below and uh, we'll figure out how to make this better next time. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.